G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. All right, Thursday evening here in Australia and the markets continue to go down and we've lost the $54,000 barrier. There was a bit of support at 54,000. That's been broken and based on some of the stories I'm reading, I think we're gonna have a slow burn going downwards for a while. Now again, if you've been watching me, you know that you know I make these kind of you know sort of predictions at times and the complete opposite happens and that's the way it is. But just, I get the feeling like there's some things going on that it's just gonna slow the market down. I think we're gonna retreat a little bit now. Ethereum's not do, doing too bad. It's actually been sort of gaining. And look, some other coins have, but overall, look, the market is going down. And that's what we need to remember. I think we're possibly gonna go under the $2 trillion mark uh, by the end of this week, uh, during the weekend. And I, I think we go down a little bit for a while. Uh, for, it's mainly regulation stuff, I think, that's really kind of holding us back at the moment. Uh, you know, and people were just getting too crazy, you know, going long on Bitcoin and getting liquidated. There's a few different factors, but they're the things that I'm watching out for. And, you know, I'll explain it as we go through. So Bitcoin dominance, again, it's even lower, 48%. Good Lord. Ethereum dominance is growing. People are getting super bullish on Ethereum at the moment, but gas prices is still a little bit high. All right, as we can see, there's a lot of red here. So a bit of a bloodbath kind of. And again, we can see Bitcoin's going down. But in the last hour, not much has really gone up. But in 24 hours, you know, Ethereum's done all right, up 5.6%. And it is uh, gaining against Bitcoin at the moment. Now let's have a look. What's done really well, though? Has anything really pumped? Yep. Pirate chain, never even heard of it. Sounds ridiculous already. And this is just the crazy, silly stuff that's going to go on. Maker, I mean, at least that's a, a good project. Same with Uniswap. You know, I think people are getting a little bit excited about version 3. We spoke to that. Solana, Polygon, I mean, last 24 hours, done well. Compound, excuse me, Digibyte. So we've had some things that have done pretty good. And even some others that are still just kind of doing all right. Aave up 3%. So any gain is a good gain. But obviously, any loss is a bad loss. And that's what we need to have a look at now because we saw it was pretty red before. What's not done so well in the last, yeah, 24 hours at least. All right, Dogecoin again continues to drop. It was always going to happen. I'm sure it will, you know, level out at some stage. V Chain again, it just really, really pumped and it's just simply people taking profits and fair enough, nothing wrong with that. Look, only one really kind of, you know, set, I mean, 20% is not really bad. Again, unless you bought the top, then it is. But 20% loss from, you know, basically 120% gains, not so bad over seven days. And same with VeChain. It's still up 23% from where it started seven days ago. And then we're just getting into low kind of, you know, still double digits. I mean, engines really getting hammered at the moment. But again, it had such a good pump. They don't last forever. There has to be a point where there's just not enough people buying anymore. And other people are going, you know what? My coin's, you know, 3x, 4x, 5x, or 10x, or 100x, whatever it is. I might take some profits now. And that's what we're seeing. It's also a bit of panic in the market. You know, new buyers are just freaking out. And so they're selling at a loss. That's, <laughs> that's stock standard. That's what happens. Like, I haven't panicked and sold anything. I, I've panicked. Well, not panicked at all. I was going to say I panicked bought. I didn't even panic buy, but I just bought. And I'm going to continue to buy. You know, I've already said this before. This dip, it's just that. It's not the end of the cycle. We didn't see that crazy parabolic blow off top. It's just a healthy retracement. And that's what it is. It literally is healthy. It's going to shake out the silly money who are here just to make a quick buck. And it's going to find out who's legit about these projects. And all the people who are trying to go long are going to keep getting wrecked. And then everyone's going to try and go short. There's just going to be everyone trying to short the market. And that is when you're going to see a big mad pump. When everyone's finally, you know, shorting the market and giving up and not really investing, that's when you can see things will go off. All right, let's have a look at the chart. So as we can see, 50-day moving average, we lost it. And I, told, I talked about that the other day. And we've lost the $54,000 mark. It was here. We literally closed under it the other day. Now it's sitting around 53000 I really do think this is the mark we've got to look out for now, around the $50,000 mark. But I do think it's entirely possible that, like I said, we just get a slow burn and we come down and we probably even break this 100-day moving average. This could literally go on until, you know, like the end of May or something. 
Now, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, and I don't offer financial advice, as I tell you all the time. I'm just saying what I see. You know, we had such a crazy run. I mean, you look from here, the 12th of December. I mean, you know, what kind of gains are we talking in just, you know, four months? So let's go from here to here. In four months, we had 260% gains. So everyone basically who was in back here has doubled, nearly tripled their money. Of course, there's going to be some kind of payback. Uh, not payback, sorry, retracement, you know, I guess payback. Yeah, that's what it is. You know, people are paying themselves back, you know, for the original money that they put in. So I wouldn't be surprised if we got down to about 50% of all of that. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get there. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised. I think there's going to be a lot of buying pressure from some bigger companies. You know, newer ones who got in the space are probably going to panic and sell. The ones who've been around for a little bit longer, MicroStrategy and... Uh, Tesla and things like that, they're going to be buying more. They absolutely will be, but they won't be just kind of, you know, throwing everything at it. They'll just continue to buy the dip, knowing that at some stage this will turn. It's just how long that it's going to take. That's what we're unsure of. So for me, 50% retracement of that 262% gain, that has us sitting at around about 41,000. I'd really be looking for somewhere around about there. Now, again, I think this is probably a little bit too low, but you know, 50 day moving average is done. Let's have a look for the 100. Can it bounce off here and hold? It could bounce and still roll over. And again, I really think once we get down into, you know, kind of the mid 45, uh, more, mid $40,000 range, I think there's going to be heavy accumulation there. And particularly if we get anywhere near the 200 day moving average, I think there will be super heavy buying. I don't think it can get down there, but hey, we'll wait and see. All right, that's my chart analysis. So again, for me, I'm just buying. I'm, I'm not panicking. I'm not getting out. Now, here's some of the things that we need to look at. So this is part of the reason. So we're fighting a bit of a battle. Now, Venmo has just started selling crypto to, you know, 70 million users around the world. So that's good news. But there's other companies that are still actively fighting against it. So UK bank NatWest bars business that accepts crypto. So NatWest's head of risk called cryptocurrencies high risk in a shareholder meeting. And look, some are. But I don't believe all are. I think they've, again, stood the test of time. They've proved what they're about. Now, the bank's stance aligns with HSBC's perspective on crypto. They won't let anyone who's involved in crypto bank with them. That's the way they're working at the moment. And look, that's fine by them. I would say a lot of this is they are going to try and push the price down as low as they possibly can buy the absolute crap out of it because they know it's coming. They're not stupid. This is a calculated move in my mind. Uh, NatWest and HSBC and you know some other big players will do the same. They're going to try and push it down as low as they can and they're going to accumulate all the way down until they build a position that they're happy with and then they're going to say, you know, in hindsight, we've decided that crypto is, you know, good and blah, blah, and then the price will skyrocket after that and they'll make a mozza. That's what I think is going on. So UK commercial and retail bank NatWest will not accept corporate customers who deal in cryptocurrency. So it's not the everyday uh, mum and pop. They don't care too much about that. But the big businesses, you know, like say any kind of crypto, uh, what is it, exchanges or, you know, MicroStrategy or Tesla, they wouldn't be able to bank with NatWest. That's, you know, their stance on it. And again, like I said, they will be buying this dip. I bet you any money there's going to be news that comes out and says they bought this dip and now they're invested. So that is part of the reason why things are going down. This is part of the reason as well. So Congress inches closer to making crypto regulations clearer. Now, there's good side to that, but there's also bad side. What if it's, if it's really heavy regulation and people are worried about it? But the upside is, is if we get good regulation that is clear and doesn't stifle it, then the, you know, crypto can go to the moon, as they say. Now we go down here, though. The uh, Eliminate Barriers to Innovation Act was passed in the US House of Representatives. It establishes a working group to answer key questions about crypto regulations. Now it would direct the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, so the CFTC, and the Securities and Exchange Commission to jointly establish a digital asset working group. 
I think this is needed. Now, the working group will be given one year to analyze the country's current laws and regulations pertaining to digital assets. So again, for the next, this could change everything. For the next year, we might not see anything too crazy happen because there's still this kind of uncertainty. I don't think it's gonna last that long, but it's something that we need to consider. Now it says they'll be given uh, one year to analyze, they could get it done much quicker. So they're the, some of the things that I think are kind of holding crypto back. But it's not going to kill it, it's just gonna slow it down. At some stage, once all the regulations are done, and again, all these big businesses like you know NatWest Bank and that have got their position, mark my words, they're gonna sell the backside out of it. So for me, I am buying this dip and I will not stop buying. I will continue to buy because I know it might take a year. It might take four years from now. Who knows? But eventually crypto is just going to go back up. That is my personal opinion, not financial advice. But that's based on history. The only way we can try to predict the future is to have a look at what's happened in the past. This is just a correction. This has been seen every single time Bitcoin has had a uh, bull cycle. There's all these kind of things and we have retracements. And that is all this is, ladies and gentlemen. All right, gaming soft giant. So Ubisoft, they've got into Tezos. So French game publisher Ubisoft has partnered with Tezos, becoming an official corporate validator node on its blockchain. Ubisoft is now one of the largest video game publishers to work with DeFi protocols and using blockchain technology. I really haven't heard too much about Tezos for a really, really long time. So this is good news for Tezos. I mean, where are they these days? I'm not even sure where they are. They were quite high. They were right up there for a while. So Tezos, where are they these days? Good Lord. Um, FX taken. 40. I literally, I think they're in the top 10 for a while. Nearly the top five at one stage. So they've really come right down. Now. When people start to really lose faith in things is usually the best buying opportunity because if it does come back, it's probably gonna come back really hard. Now I don't own any Tezos, I'm not telling you to buy any Tezos, but maybe that is the sign of it's a good buy. Now I think Synthetics Network is another one. I mean, that was way up there. Where are we now? There we go, 57. Again, I'm not saying Synthetics Network can't go lower, it can but I, I'm, I'm back to buying the crap out of it because it's having a good, healthy retracement. I still think it's a great project. And I think this was 15, uh, 12 or something for a while. So it's a bit out of favor at the moment with the high gas fees and just things going down. But this is still my pick and I'm gonna buy the backside out of it now that it's uh, so low and the lower it goes. Because it's not going lower because of bad news. It's not going lower because of bad code. It's just simply going lower because it's lost a bit of hype at the moment. Once everything starts to pick up and that next DeFi cycle comes, I believe this will pump. So that's one of the things I'm looking to buy. Stacks as well, uh, not bad and it's had a bit of a retracement. So again, I talk about these things all the time and I'll continue to talk about them. Polygon is, you know, it's started to drop lower again. That was up above 50 something. And so again, there's lots of projects at the moment. They just don't have all the hype. A lot of these are getting more hype and that's what all this is, hype cycles. Aave, I think it was number 10 and now it's down at 33. They are all going to flip eventually and it'll go back, you know, BitTorrent. I don't know what that really does, if it does too much at all. Bitcoin SV, nowhere near as good as Aave, nowhere near as good as Synthetics in my mind. There's so many good projects. And, you know, Neo, we've hardly heard anything about it. And all of a sudden it has this pump and it jumps back up. And that's a bit of a zombie chain. I'm not saying nothing's being done on it, but not a whole lot. I mean, Filecoin, you know, again, that was kind of nowhere and pumped up fairly high. Uh, and it, it is still up number wise, but we can see a good retracement. So again, something I'll be looking at. So there's definitely, you know, it looks scary at the moment and it is, well, it is scary for people who just aren't used to it. But, you know, try not to panic too much. This is simply just a correction. All right, Ripple co-founder, and I kind of agree with this. Bitcoin needs to move away from proof of work concept mechanism to remain the world's dominant currency. I agree. The amount of power that it chews up, 
I think proof of work, uh, it's just, it, it's going to be unsustainable. I think Bitcoin will have to go to, you know, some other mechanism. I don't know what it would be. Proof of stake maybe or something else. But I think proof of work is just going to cost too much and it will be its downfall. And that doesn't mean Bitcoin will die and be worth nothing. But it will be kind, it will become very similar to gold eventually. You know, it, it, it'll be... A store of value but you know not the best thing out there anymore there'll be something else and that's like gold there's something there's something else other than gold and that's bitcoin and then there's ethereum and there's all these other things coming i think yeah the proof of work um uh, you know it was good to get it started and i think they do need to move away from that and likely go into a proof of stake or just something else that doesn't chew up so much power you know the, the world's trying to get green and the amount of power they use and even though they're using green energy that's great it just as bitcoin gets older it uses more and more power i'm not sure we have enough green power to continue you know through to 2000 uh and 40 no two, 21,040 uh when bitcoin's finally done i think yeah it'll have to move on from that all right big news for australia so despite scams australian securities regulators keen to support crypto industry i love this there's scams and everything, you know, we don't go banning cash because there's scams in cash and we don't need to do that with cryptocurrencies. We just got to get out the regulation sorted and get, you know, rid of the bad players. So the Australian Securities and Investments Commission wants to support the local cryptocurrency industry despite receiving large numbers of reports about crypto scams. And there are lots of scams, uh, unfortunately. But then, you know, crypto is not bad. It's the scams within crypto that are bad. Crypto itself, it's the future. It's, you know, you know my opinion. If you don't, like I said, it's the future. But that's not financial advice. That's just my personal opinion from time here. All right. So Elon Musk, you know, Tesla, big buyers of Bitcoin. Well, someone's come and said, you know, let's see how legit you are. But we need to be careful. So on the April the 20th, a video streaming from YouTube channel called firstmill.com has the Bitcoin Cash community talking. Now the host of the channel, uh, sitting in a Tesla dealership parking lot, explains in his recent video that if Elon Musk gets Tesla to accept Bitcoin Cash directly for cars, he plans to commit uh, to purchasing 111 Tesla Model 3s. <laughs> I don't think uh, Elon is too interested in Bitcoin Cash, in, in all fairness. You know, I'm not saying he won't do it, and I could be wrong, but I think he's fairly Bitcoin-focused and Ethereum-focused, and Bitcoin Cash is a fork of Bitcoin that, you know, yeah, it's faster and cheaper transactions, but, I, again, it's just not the real thing. It's not as secure, and it's gone in a different uh, route than the actual Bitcoin core. So I don't know if he's going to take this up, but very interesting that they would... Yeah, try and put that out there. All right, look, that's it for me again. Mainly it's about the markets. There's a couple of good news stories there. But again, it's things like this that are reason that, you know, it's going down. There's companies actively trying to fight it. But I just guarantee you they're going to be buying this dip and they're going to try and push it down as low as they can to get as much as they can. Because they know they can't beat it. It's not going to die. This is all FUD. You know, they say regulation is going to come and ruin it. And then we've got this stuff over here. And this isn't saying it's ruining it. But people can take that in two ways. They're like, oh, they're coming in to regulate it. They'll probably really heavily regulate it and rah, rah, rah. Look, I think there's going to be a happy balance in between. It will be heavier regulated than what most people, long-term crypto people would probably like. But the newer people into the space will probably be happy because they'll be protected and all the rest of it. I do think there's going to be a happy medium. And I really do think crypto is the future. So I'm not panicking. I'm not worried. I'm buying the dip all the projects that I really like and ones that I just thought I'd, you know, sort of completely and utterly missed, I'll be buying those as well. That's me. I don't know how else to put it. You need to make your own mind up, as I say. Don't simply, you know, follow me because I say that's what I'm doing or what I think is a good idea. It's always about you. You need to do your own research, you know, and, you know, gather your uh, thought process from a number of different places, you know. There are good YouTubers out there. I'm not going to name anyone specifically other than myself, you know, and we give you, you know, what I think is pretty good advice. Uh, but not everyone on YouTube gives you good advice. Uh, Twitter's got some really good stuff, but it's got some really bad stuff. Some of these, you know, places, you know, where you can read stories like, you know, uh, Crypto Potato, 
uh, Cointelegraph and Decrypt and you know Bitcoin.com and all of that. Again, they got good and bad articles, so you need to take that holistic approach from all of that. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Congratulations to you if you're on that gain train. That's pretty impressive. And I'll see you next time.